watching Fox 23 News at 6.30. It is a machine designed to give back independence, and that alone could make for a good story to tell you tonight. But in this week's Dear Ago Stories, Fox 23's Jenna Barnello shows us the people behind this chair and the special person who will ride in it. It's all about the big projects at How and How Technologies. They're building top secret tanks, trucks to fight wildfires. Brothers Jeff and Mike Howe are always pushing their team to create the next big thing. Hard work does pay off, but it's hard work. But the biggest payoff comes from a smaller project, the RIP chair, an off-road vehicle for someone in a wheelchair. Hunting, fishing, going out, farming, um, pretty much anything you can do with an ATV, this machine can do, and quite often more. The more can best be explained by the guy who sells them. It's basically the baddest chair that you can buy on earth. It's awesome, I love this thing. Tony Tulo's been selling rip chairs for two years now, nine years ago. Somebody dropped a tree on my head. The accident left him paralyzed from the chest down. I always grew up on four wheelers and snowmobiles and everything like that. And then, you know, in an instance that all gets taken away from you. Tony Tulo knows everything about the rip chair, but he doesn't know this. And everything on this thing is exactly custom for him. For the past four months on nights, weekends and holidays, Tony's co-workers have been secretly building him a rip chair and they're going to give him the $40,000 ride for free. He's not just an employee, he's a really good friend of ours. His struggles defined him and changed him, but he changed us. He has no clue, I hope. I don't have one yet, but it's almost worth them getting one and me seeing a smile on their face than me actually having one. We distracted Tony with the help of co-owner Jeff Howe until it was time for the big reveal. And I know, Tony, that, that you know a lot about these chairs um, and, and you, you love these chairs, but you want to turn, turn around for a second? There's one thing you probably don't know. What? Keep turning. Do you know what that is right there? That's your rip chair? Yeah, that's your rip chair, brother. No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. Are you serious? Yeah. All the guys got together and uh, put their time in and made it. That's for you, man. So we love you and. Thank you so much, man. Tony Tulo is now one of only 18 people to own a rip chair. Holy crap. Thank you so much. I'm speechless, guys. Thank you so much. So the only thing left to do is get in and ride. Now we could give back to him and, you know, I'm kind of speechless about it. I'm just so happy for him. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm going to end up in the woods with him. <laughs> I get on these things and I don't think about my injury at all. I can die a happy man. <laughs> but first, Tony Tulo's got plenty of living to do, thanks to his co-workers turned friends, turned family. In Waterboro, Jana Barnello, Fox 23 News. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a beautiful story. Yeah, oh my gosh. I bring tears to my eyes just watching literally. him and the, his joy from this and the fact that, you know, now he can do so many things that were really unimaginable yeah. uh, I, I, for quite some time. Amazing that they're able to keep that secret. And yeah. obviously, Janet did a great job <laughs> helping keeping it secret as well from him. Hey, Tony wasted no time in the rupture. You saw a little bit of that video that uh, Janet got. These are pictures from just last weekend. He says he made some uh, new trails outside of his home in his brand new rip chair. You're watching Fox 23 News at 6.30. An artist who has spent decades creating art is learning sometimes you have to get a little creative. In this week's Dear Ago Stories, Fox 23's Jana Barnello shows us the piece of technology that's liberating a Portland painter. The oil paintings are a sight to see, proudly signed by the artist who can't hear the praise. I've always tried to make my work as realistic as I can. Her reality changed nearly 20 years ago. I have a very serious illness. When Mickey O'Day went deaf. A long car trip, driving by myself. 
I just had to listen to my own thoughts. That's when I realized I'm a little bit nutty. Um. <laughs> her neurological disease is called neurofibromatosis 2. In addition to her deafness, it also causes tumors to grow on her brain and spine. My right hand shakes a little bit. And I could no longer grasp the brushes, much less control the brush. Two years ago, when she could no longer paint, Mickey got creative. Recognize this flag. Using an iPad, Mickey paints pictures she takes around town, hours and hours dedicated to choosing each pixel of paint. I like this because I'm getting some texture here. Her finger creating each stroke of the brush. It's the pleasure of finger painting. Remember when you were a kid? It's a bit more sophisticated than our kindergarten creations. But for Mickey, painting makes her as happy today as it did when she first picked up a paintbrush. Not the sound crying, but once the sound was out of the way, and all I had was vision. You can study things more intently. Um, you have to study things more intently. So Mickey became a student of digital art. Technology is my friend. As technology allows her to keep painting, Mickey also hopes technology will help find a cure for her rare disease. I may die from this. Um, I probably will, but not yet. Mickey O'Day is a painter with persistence. In Portland, Jana Barnello, Fox 23 News. I mean, that's incredible. Wow. I'm embarrassed. Imaging. I can't paint anything near that well with two good no, hands. No, no, no. And, you know, one iPad painting takes her about 128 hours. Mm. She says, though, she enjoys every second of it. Oh, you can see the results. By the way, you can see more of her art. We'd like to share it with you. You can find it right now on our website, WGME.com. So talented. You're watching Fox 23 News at 630. I keep an eye out for this logo. It's one of the only types of salsa of its kind on the market right now. It's made in Maine, but that's not what makes it stand out. In this week's Dear Ago Stories, Jana Barnello shows us how a salsa recipe is bringing a Wyndham mother and son closer than they've ever been before. At the West Falmouth Hannaford, at the start of aisle five, you'll find Maine Tech's grilled salsa a made-made product with a little twist. It's just made with lots of love. <laughs> it's made in one blender with one mother, one son. Eight months ago, I became a salsa maker, and that was all out of nowhere. Lay got her start with a photograph on Facebook. That's her 15-year-old son, Bryce, helping her make grilled salsa on a warm day last December. And within two weeks, I had 109 orders, a patent attorney, a food scientist, USDA involved. So everything just kind of went nuts from there. But what keeps her grounded is a great cause. Bryce has autism. Lay says sometimes he hurts himself. He doesn't talk much, but he loves to cook. Good job. High five. Okay, you're all done, dude. The duo has big dreams for their little business. Lay wants it to also help the autism charity she founded. So let's say some of the proceeds from the salsa go towards a special foundation for autism and we fund a work program so that we can get them to work and out of their technology all day. Getting their product in Hannaford is a big step toward Lay's goal to someday employ workers like her son. Right now, they don't have the capacity to do that. I can produce out of this kitchen probably 150 if I work really hard 200 jars a day if I work really hard and that's like a 15 hour day. That's a lot of work for any parent but this single mom has found a time saver. Take about three minutes yeah. rather than eight hours. In a few weeks Lay is getting a new kitchen space thanks to Danielle Sebago diner. She'll get to use it when the diner closes in the afternoon. I'm like go for it girlfriend. You know, if it helps kids, it helps a cause to get these kids working and, and whatnot, I'm all for it. From welfare and disability to a small business owner, Lay says she and Bryce will make it one jar of salsa at a time. My hope is that he will be able to function and, and run this company with me, um, you know, and if something happens that he will be able to, he will be taken care of. In Wyndham, Jana Barnello, Fox 23 News.
I want to rush right out I know, and get cool. some. <laughs> By the way, she has a meeting with the health inspector tomorrow at the diner, and once she passes inspection, she can start making more salsa. Yeah, and she was telling space. Jenna that once she is in there, she thinks she can at least double her production. She hopes to be on more store shelves after she does that. So yeah, it's looking up. A lot of determination there, and I hope that. it pays off. It's terrific.